Awicha, wrong view, based on the belief in a self at the center of a universe that is separate from that self. This is not true and it is wrong view. And it causes us to perceive reality from our own central point of view and change reality into our own interpretation and see things wrongly. This is why we get angry, disappointed and dissatisfied, which is, of course, the essence of dukkha, suffering or unsatisfactoriness. We all possess this except the enlightened ones, but some of us can know it and some of us do not know it yet, that our thought process is wrong. Let me give an example. Uh, I have a personal thing that every time I'm in the middle of doing something, for example, uh, wrapping something up, packing something, writing down a telephone number, before I get to finish what it is I'm doing, I get an intense necessity to go to the toilet. And I have to go to the toilet before I can finish what I'm doing. And so, I, when this happens, I, I see my mind thinking, and my mind often thinks, my brain thinks by itself, wondering, what is this strange phenomenon that every time I'm going to do something which requires concentration, or which requires to stay by the task and finish it, and it has a series of processes, I have to rush to the toilet. It seems as if the universe makes it happen this way. Only difference is because I know of the false process of mind, of mental thought formations, which are controlled by rupa and nama, form and name, that, and that we have the wrong view of a self, and that I still suffer this wrong view. If not, I would be a Buddha, and if you did not, you would also be a Buddha. So we have to conclude we all suffer from this wrong view. And so I see myself thinking, why does the universe and my body make me rush to the toilet when I'm trying to finish an important task? And then I tell myself with the Dhamma, of, with the Buddha Dhamma, that actually that is not really the case. It just seems that way. I notice it only when I have to urgently go to the toilet. But actually, the real truth of the matter is that I refuse to go to the toilet until I really have to go. And that it is only sometime later in the afternoon, when I'm in the middle of a task, at some point it will come along and I will have to go to the toilet. I may have done 50 tasks before that without this phenomenon occurring, but I didn't notice. But the first time it occurs during the day, I do notice and forget to notice that the reason the feeling is coming on to rush to the toilet is not because I am performing a task, rather it is because I have waited too long and my body really has to go now. And so how we interpret in events when they happen we think they happen to us and that we take it personally. We think it's actually focused on us when really the world is just getting along with its own business and our bodies and our metabolism and it's completely ignoring us. It doesn't even know we are there. And so the world toddles along and we think the world is actually paying attention to us and doing things directly focused on us. And when somebody says... I don't like cherries, and we like cherries, we feel offended and we get angry or get grumpy. Because if they don't che like cherries, and I like cherries, I think liking cherries is tantamount to me, myself, I. And so if they insult cherries, they're insulting me because I like cherries. When actually, they're not even referring to you at all. They're just talking about cherries which has nothing to do with you or your person or me or my person. And so when people say they don't believe in Buddha or Jesus Christ and you do and you feel offended, realize that they're not saying they don't believe in you or that they don't like you. 
They're just saying that they don't believe in something which you have chosen to believe in. The thing that is believed in is not you and it's not them. It's not a person. And this is why all the trouble happens, because we believe in that person as a separate entity from the rest of the universe and that it is in the center of the universe and that everything is happening to a person. It's happening to me. But there is no person for it to happen to in the way that we see it. And this is the mental process of Awicca. It doesn't matter if it's noticing going to the toilet and why you have to suddenly go or why this person is offending you because they're not offending you, they're just making a statement regardless of your existence. And so this is how we take things wrongly and create imaginary sufferings for ourselves. Well, this was, I think, my second attempt to explain the process of awicca, wrong view and wrong knowledge and illusory thought which is controlled by conditioned thoughts, forms and the, the conditioned ideas we build up when we give names to things. So this is Ajahn Spencer finishing this particular Quantum Dhamma podcast, signing off.